Greetings, YouTubers. This is Mystic Writer again. Today I'm going to be talking about the Callista Tools Perfector. And if you don't already know, uh, this is a brush with ionic capabilities um, that when you touch it, it feels like plastic, like hard plastic. That's what it feels like. So uh, it's not metal and it's very user friendly because it is smooth on the tips and it makes it so it doesn't grind your scalp or pull at your hair too much okay so uh i'm making this video because when i first bought this i was so excited about using it because it's something that i thought they should have made a long time ago a brush that acts like a flat iron instead so um, the one thing that got me is that they said do not put any product on your hair when you use it and for us natural ladies and men out there um, you're used to using a hair serum you know um, before applying any uh, heat product any heating tool and that's what I did so I cheated so in doing so I noticed that inside of the grooves it would get extremely dirty and right now it doesn't look so so dirty because I cleaned it before my last wash and it was hideously messy and it's not like you can just take a sponge and just wipe it off and you're all good because even though you don't see anything once you plug it in and you start use, using it again you smell that you know kinda like a burny type smell and it's not your hair burning and it's not this burning it's actually the buildup inside that's kind of cooking so and it's not a pleasant smell and with all of all of the exhaust from it you have to be in a room by yourself to use it and even after that you have to air the whole you know room out which is very unpleasant you know you just want to kind of take it and go so I haven't seen any videos on how to clean this tool and I guess no one has figured it out so I have figured out how to clean it and unfortunately it does not dismantle on its own or should I say not on its own but it doesn't dismantle without any tools so there are some tools that you're going to need before trying to clean this and um, I'm going to list those for you the next screen Okay, so now that you've seen which tools you'll need, I'm going to start dismantling this. Okay, so with my Phillips head tool, you're going to see a little hole right here. And you're going to start taking that out, and I will probably speed up this video at this time. Teeny tiny screw. Okay. okay, now you're going to go to the top, the very top. And what that is right here is it's a little rubber inside of it. Not only out the exterior, but inside it's rubber also. And that little thing right there, it's 
protecting a screw. So you can actually use a flathead if you have a small one or you can use this is actually a really tiny one that I have but it's not a flathead and I can't find it so I actually used this the last time and it worked just fine to get that screw out so just turning counterclockwise you'll wonder how does this work in there but it actually does and you're going to take that off And oops, this is what it looks like. That was actually a little black washer. So this this camera is reversed, so I it's all crazy. Anyway, so this is this is what comes out. And the screw is this is this is what you are taking out actually. So you're going to put this to the side of course and your best bet is just to stick it back in there so you don't lose it. Okay the fun part is actually removing all of these things and unfortunately you can't just take it all out. There is another screw. <laughs> So you have to shift these up, you just move them, glide them up, push it with your thumb or whatever, and what you're looking for is this really tiny, tiny screw. Let's see if I can get it as close to the camera as possible. Uh, you probably can't see it too well, but if you if you have this same model of the Perfector, this is the, I believe this is the original one, the first one. Now they have like three, three others and colors and things you can get off of, um, I think it's QVC, I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's QVC, one of those, one of those home shopping channels. And this for this model it would be parallel to this so in line with this area so it's, when you look up the screw is right there it's very very tiny very tiny so you're going to need something really small like this one uh, or whatever screw one of those that I had on the list and you're going to start dismantling that it's a very tiny screw so you have to hold it over something because if you drop it it's it's gone <laughs> it's really small okay so I'm going to pause the video here and come back okay so I've taken that off and the screw is extremely let's see if I can hold it this way extremely tiny really really tiny probably about three or four millimeters long okay so you want to put that to the side also and what I actually used uh, was this little tool that you can get out of uh, the eyeglass uh, the eyeglass tool kit tool repair kit and it's really small it has a very it's like a teeny weeny weeny screwdriver Okay, so now that we have that off, you are able to shift. Let's see. Now, actually. Oh, okay, yes, I forgot. Now, this actually comes off. It is the top of this. So, the easiest way to get that off is to use a very tiny flathead screwdriver and this also came out of the eyeglass tool repair kit and just slide them down like that oh that looks nasty anyway okay uh, and then you just pluck it off from the top Ooh, that went flying 
and it looks like a little wheel. So now you're able to just slide them all off. And it doesn't matter where they fall because they are pretty much identical. I believe they are identical. Okay, and then so it will look like this. Uh, the screen is backwards. It drives me. Okay, so that's how it looks, and you're going to have quite a few of them. Let's see here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, and eleven. Yeah, I believe you're gonna have eleven. Let's see, no one fell before, and that one just fell. Two. Okay, twelve. So you're gonna have twelve of those. Now you can see. Now, even though I cleaned it the last time. There's a teeny bit of goo on there, but you nothing compared to what was in there before I cleaned it, and that was after having it and using it for a long time. So I didn't use it every week or every month or anything like that, but I've had it for, I think, over a year. Maybe, I'm sorry, it's been maybe about two years, something like that. Okay, so anyway, you're going to have this, and you're going to have to clean it. If you have never cleaned it, it might scare you. So initially, I thought that the goo that was in there was product buildup, but I don't put any product in my hair uh, now that I'm natural. When before I did, when I when I had a relaxer, I used to put products in my hair like a lot. Uh, the only products I put in now is like maybe some gel every so often if I'm wearing my hair up and I want to smooth it out or what have you. Uh, not too many pro products do I put in my hair. So when I was using this, I thought at first, like I said before, that it was the hair serum that was building up. But then I wouldn't put anything in there. So in not putting anything in there, no protective serums or anything it was still getting a buildup and I realized that's my sebum from my scalp actually getting on the product and there's nothing that you could do about that because you can't stop the sebum from forming you know um, <clears throat> if you do it after a fresh wash and there is absolutely nothing in there you stand a better chance but even then there still seemed to be something going on, something getting on it, and it wasn't product. So, <clears throat> so now what I did the last time was to take a Q-tip and clean in between these grooves, and you're going to have to clean both sides of it because the grooves are deep and they're like little pockets. So you're going to have to do that. Uh, and then as far as these, they have their own little grooves in them. Yeah. The grooves are very tight and all through there you'll, you'll see gook building up. And you have to clean each and every one of them, <laughs> which is not fun, in addition to in between all of these teeth. So, let's clean the teeth. So basically, if you do this over the sink, you're going to get this done quick and thoroughly. So your best bet is to take a toothbrush and go all in between. But the first thing you want to do is to use uh, some sort of cotton swab or a cotton pad and just like swoop. And see, don't be grossed out, but uh, see there, there's already something on it. And it doesn't look like there's anything on it too much, but there is. It just builds up everywhere. It's all built up. And you're going to do that with each of them. Uh, you can clean it using your own method, but I, I thought that this was a pretty good method. And um, 
I used the water, of course, over the sink, but just for the sake of the video, I put a little water in here with uh, dish detergent. Um, and if you just clean it like that, it'll get out, get all of the gook out quicker. And you can then rinse all of these, all 12 of these in your sink. Now putting it back together is a little more fun than dismantling it. So putting it back together, you're just going to take each of them and slide them back into each groove like that and you're going to do that all the way around and then once you get to that point <coughs> then of course you're going to put this top back on now there's a little method to the madness here because if you forget which direction the easiest thing to do is to look at the back. It actually has a shape that fits exactly into this group. So you can't see it too well on camera, but the shape on the inside is exactly that shape. And it fits right in because if you don't line it up, right it will not go in and you'll have yourself frustrated for a long time and also putting it back is you have to there's a little method there as well it will not it, it won't be flush and the reason for that is because once you line it once all of them are in there and you line them all up you'll see why it doesn't go flush right away they all have to be in and then when they're all in, it'll go down. So in doing that, <clears throat> you're going to put all of these back. Once they're all in there, then you want to take that tiny screw, the little one that I had on this cotton uh, pad, you take that, put it in first. Because if you don't put that in first, it won't work any other way. So you put that screw in first so you get it uh, it's tight and it'll all fit down so that teeny tiny screw I'm not going to do it now because I actually have to clean this because I'm going to be washing my hair and using it the next time around I'm also going to be doing a video on that not just so you can see me use this tool but I'm going to be adding a special product yes I know I said no product but this is a product that has absolutely no residue it's basically it looks exactly like water it feels exactly like water and I believe I actually mentioned it in one of my prior videos so uh, I'll just give you a cheat it's setting lotion okay so spoiler alert uh, okay so you put that in the middle there and then once you do that and you have this on top you're going to be able to finally put this back on and the thing that gave me a little bit of trouble is this Dagon washer every time I try to put it on it kept falling and it's very you have to hold it down because it keeps falling keeps falling and then you can't get it in okay and then you're gonna put this back on top this little piece here Put that back in, use your handy dandy to screw that back in clockwise, and then from there you can finally put the first screw in, which is on the flip side of this, and that goes in the back. So you put that little screw in there and you're good to go, tighten it up, and it'll be clean for I think one wash because I literally cleaned this the last the last wash cycle and already have to clean it again so I'm not going to do my review on this in this video but uh, that's something to keep in mind okay so 
Again, I made this video because I don't see anyone else who has made a video on it, and I was baffled at first as to why not only this this styling tool, but most styling tools don't give you the option to clean the tool thoroughly without dismantling it. And I was just hoping that there was a way that I could open this up without using any tools, but there isn't any other way. So that's what you're going to have to deal with if you get this tool or if you have this tool. Okay? So thank you for watching, and if you haven't already, please subscribe and like, and I'll see you in my next video.